Praxis, and I did not finish this sink cupboard area yesterday, but I think I'm just about to finish it uh, today. And I want to talk a little bit about the process that I've used to put this together. Uh, I've been kind of going one step at a time uh, because it's kind of a complicated shape, and that's not necessarily the best approach if you want to have you know beautiful, elegant symmetry and everything. But this is all just you know raw structure that's hidden underneath and doesn't really matter as long as it's strong. Uh, one of the most interesting boards I put in yesterday was this one up on the back. This is being supported on these uh, two boards that I uh, uh, ram set nailed into the concrete, but it's also being uh, held up on the back uh, concrete sill here. It's actually slightly lower than the sill plate that is on there, so I had to notch it out on the back side. And because the concrete sill, it, you know, it's not completely flat the whole way uh, uh, along it, what I did is I over notched this board and then put a run of mortar in the back and then set the board down into the mortar so it's nice and supported along the whole back edge so it's not putting all the weight on these uh, boards here. It's nice and uh, distributed. Uh, from there I just kind of kept doing a little bit at a time, keeping a little toe tuck area in there. And this is the last piece to go in and I want to talk a little bit about how I've been uh, creating these. When it, whenever you have something it's not that many boards, you know, it's, there's not a lot of crisscrossing uh, to hold the thing together here. Uh, I like to use screws to hold it together. I could do this with nails, but screws just grab it, make it a lot more rigid. And as I was putting it together, I was also using uh, this clamp. For any boards that have a little bit of a twist to them, you put the clamp on, clamp them uh, down so that they're nice and uh, smooth and flush, screw them in, then you release the clamp and everything looks beautiful. Um, that said, <laughs> I put this in a little bit ago, I noticed there's still a little bit of a twist to it. But that's going to be fine because what I'm going to do, and I'll just show you where the twist is. Ah, there we are. So it's, uh, it's nice and flush up here. I'll just attach it here, nice and flush down here, attach it there, attach it here. Right here there's a twist in where this is kicked in about an inch, but that's fine. Once I get all these other three connection points done, I'll use the clamp, pull that over, put a screw in and this will be all set. And uh, I think it's going to work out really well. Uh, you know, I know that when I first found out that I had the wrong size cabinet, I was fairly bummed about it. But you know, I'll, I'll be darned if when there's a situation that is bad, I'm not going to try to you know, get something good out of it. You know, do, whenever there's a problem, whenever there's crisis or something like that, you know, not that you want to wish that on yourself, but when it happens, you know, why not try to take that as an opportunity to get something better out of the situation than you would if the crisis hadn't happened in the first place. I'm not going to actually use the word crisis <laughs> to describe this, but you know what I'm talking about. And it, uh, it's applicable to all sorts of situations in life, you know, including like, you know, SHGF situations, you know, collapse situations, you know, just because something awful is happening that you wish hadn't happened doesn't mean that you shouldn't take it as an opportunity to, you know, maybe get something better out of uh, the deal than you would have had if it didn't happen in the first place. I don't know if that's always possible, but it's always possible to try. That's it. Thanks for watching.